Hey, what's up, everybody? Look at the price of Theta. It is starting to pull back now, exactly what I was talking about yesterday. Usually when you get a big dump like this and you bounce all the way up, usually you come all the way back down and revisit the low. Now, the question is, are we going to get one more low that's still possible right on the microstructure because we have one, two, three, four, and five. So let's see how this will play out. But what I really wanted to show you is the four day chart, right? When we look at what happened here, this was the big breakdown candle, but you can see this long wick right here. You can see that long wick. And normally what I've been saying is the following candle, it likes to retrace at least 50% of that wick, maybe even lower. So we'll see how this four day candle reacts. But what's really, really cool, guys, is watch. When I turn the lights on, we're actually on a nine buy, a perfected nine buy on the four day chart, right? We had a nine buy on the three day chart, but you can see that did not play out, right? So now the price is only getting more and more exhausted, right, to the downside. So um, the three-day chart was good, but it's not as good as the four-day chart. Why? Because if you look at the four-day chart, it actually called the exact top of theta back over here back in March of this year, right? So now, I mean, this is like... Um, really poetic uh kind of right where you you come down you had a nine right here right you or you basically had a nine here but it flipped so we didn't get the nine we actually got an eight you can see six seven eight this was actually supposed to be a nine but we actually flipped the count so we had a nine buy right on the bull market support band right which then led the price green 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 all the way up to a nine sell right here and it actually the four day nine called the exact top perfectly, right? Then we started trending down, right? Going on the bull market support band, we lost it. Basically, we had a three wave shape. And now, since we've been falling here, now we're back on a nine buy, right? So we haven't had a nine buy since back over here when uh, theta was about 60, 64 cents. And you can see, right we landed straight but then it didn't really get activated till several months after that right so what we want to see here is some type of base get formed kind of like what happened over here we want to see something like this right and by the way this is also a perfected nine right it's it's an orderly fashion you can see um, typically you want the nine on the bottom, but it's still really, really good. So we want to see some kind of base get formed in here, right? These green dots are basically our setup trend line here, our, our, our support, um, down here at 93 cents. We, that is, we definitely don't want to break that. Um, and even more so like a dollar, five dollar, uh, we, we want to stay above, really this dollar you know let me see what that is here um above these above these highs here so i would say really above a dollar to a dollar 15 we really want to stay above right so uh, yeah we have this four day nine buy let's see if we can um do something with it here so right at the end of the day this could be uh one two three four and then five or a one two one two right then we get a big three but the important thing is we have one two three four five and essentially right a b c a b c a b c so we have a three-way move here as well within that structure right so um you know it, it it's looking very promising that at the least, right, we should get a retracement, right? And that doesn't mean today or tomorrow, but this thing might have another low on the micro, whatever the case may be. But eventually, we're going to start working our way back up, back to this sort of $1.90 area, back up here where we broke down. 
So this was our box right in here and we broke down. So in order to continue going down, we first have to come back up and retest it as resistance. If we retest it as resistance, we have another chance at making a higher low and then breaking it later on. Or we can simply build a base here and break it and then hold it as support and now we're, we're off to the races here. But uh, yeah, it's really kind of cool how this nine cell right here called the exact top, right? So my question is, if the four day nine cell called the exact top, will the four day nine call the exact bottom or at least somewhere close in the vicinity of that? Because I do believe the bottom's getting close, very close. Um, so one of the things you could do, you know, simple is just uh, draw a little trend line here. And if we break that, you kind of have an indication, you know. So let's actually zoom in now to a smaller time frame and uh, let's get rid of that okay so we can see obviously we've been talking about this 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 current wave here right and in this wave we have um one two three four five so we have a five wave movement here um so now we got to focus on this wave here right on the fifth wave so when we zoom in on that fifth wave you can see we only have three right it could it be finished yes right but we have one two three so my question is is this four and then we get five we actually get one more low maybe down at a dollar oh five right so then if we get that low and we get bullish divergence with it, that would be actually a good thing. You come down here, you get that bullish divergence. The four hour chart lands here, makes a lower low, and then the RSI makes a higher low, right? You can get that micro divergence. And you would also have five waves. So you'd have one, two, three, four, five. You would have five waves within this five wave move here, one, two, three, four, five. And this five wave move is the fifth wave and the entire five wave move, which is one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Right? One, two, three, four, five. So it gets, it, you know, it's like Fibonacci. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's basically it gets more and more and more zoomed in. Basically, is the same thing. So that's what we got here. Um, let's see if we can get that divergence. If we don't, let's say this comes back down, right? Because, you know, yesterday when we were up here, this was pretty accelerated, right? So I knew it was going to, this was going to be short lived. Um, I should have took probably more profit than I did, uh, but oh well. I just kind of wanted to see how it played out. But my thinking here is, what if this thing comes down, right? Like some kind of three wave shape like this and then holds the low here and then it starts making another high, right? So then what you have is you have a larger three wave move like this. So that, if that happens, right? Then it's gonna look like, you know, potentially a local bottom is already in. Um, so then you would kind of want another wave like this. If we get some kind of diagonal where it's overlapping, one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C pullback, right? That would be a good spot to go long here. So we'll see how, you know, the shape forms. Um, but yeah, it's not to, for me, it's not the time to be selling. It's the time to be looking for entries here. Everybody's flipping bearish, everybody's selling. So that's, exactly when you don't want to be selling um so uh yeah there's a lot of things that could go go on in here for example this could come back up and make another wave to the upside like this before getting that final flush to the downside um but we kind of want it to be proportional with this wave here so if this is one two and this is three, four, we have two and we have four need to be in the same degree, right? 
So um, typically if you get a big third wave like that, uh, the fifth wave shouldn't be as bad. We'll see how that plays. But uh, if I wanted in a target here, now I, I'm not sure if it's going to break the low, but if it did, a target would be somewhere around... Um, yeah, a dollar oh five is that six one eight um, to a dollar between a dollar and a dollar oh five would be an ideal spot. Um, so we'll see. We're, we're we're you know we we actually pumped up quite a bit here. You know from this low we pumped all the way up about twenty one percent. So that was a big pump to the upside, and currently we're down about. About seven, eight percent. So since this thing went up so high, it's gonna be kind of hard for it to break the low, right? So let's actually zoom in even closer and let's go down to the 45 minute chart here. So what I'm looking at here is actually nice. What do we have? Well, it actually looks interesting because we have one, two, three, four, five. We have a five wave move for, for theta. So that's so far so good right on the small time frame so um, but what the heck is going on here uh, you know it doesn't look like an, a three-wave shape that I like to see basically it kind of looks like we're bottlenecking in here and remember what happens when you bottleneck you, you usually get a big flush right before you find a bottom and then continue higher um, but essentially we want to see some type of three-wave shape in here um, so to me, it kind of looks like uh, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe we get an ABC pullback like this soon, and then we get one, two, three, four, five. So we get some kind of three wave shape, right? So we have one, one, two, three, four, five. That's wave one. And then A, B, C, that's wave two. Or this could be wave A. This could be wave B, and then we go up one, two, three, four, five for wave C. And then all that is, right, it turns into what? A larger three wave shape like this. So A, B, and then C. But if we can pull back again and then get again get another high, then it actually becomes a five wave move on the larger time frames, right? So then you're gonna to wanna to see a larger ABC pullback, right? And then one, two, three, four, five again. And then what do you have? You have a larger ABC. And then what do you wanna see, right? Then you wanna see another pullback, right? And then another fifth wave, right? And then it becomes even uh, a bigger five wave move. And then what do you wanna see, right? And then it kind of just, repeats the process then you get an ABC right and then you come back up one two three four five now you still have a three wave shape here right so then you want another ABC pullback you see what I mean it's 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 structures within structures within structures and then you get one two three four five right and then you know so at the end of the day um, we have to see how this plays out. Now, it's not gonna look like that. It's not gonna even look close to the way I've drawn it. I'm just showing you sort of that example there. Um, but uh, yeah, we bottomed out. Let's see if I put a horizontal line exactly where we bottomed out, right? Let me put that right here. I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm actually going to put another one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look left and we're going to try to identify exactly where it sort of, um, you know, bounced off of. So let me see if there's a four hour chart here. And I'm going to put one on the on the close right about there. So then I'm going to look left and I'm going to see First, I'm gonna do that on maybe the daily chart, and then we can see exactly where the price landed on. So you can see this wave here, one, two, three, four, right? 
we're right about where this this wave ended here um, before that big run up, which is a good spot also. And then we also, I mean, you can see we're, th those three black lines is exactly where we bottomed out, right? So we, we hit a support here, we hit all the support here, we hit all the support here, right? And if you keep going left, you can see Right, we actually went even below the support, right? Because if you have a line on the top of this here, right, you can see we actually went below that. Um, so I'm actually gonna put a line exactly where we are right at this moment. So where we are at this moment is, you know, we're sort of resting on top of these wicks here, but then also, Right, let me actually get rid of that. I'm gonna keep looking over here. There's a lot of support, right? This is what I wanted to show it right here. You can see all of these supports area. This is exactly where we hit, right? So all of this is pretty strong support, you would imagine, right? Um, and, and then it's also very strong resistance as well when we were underneath it. So we definitely don't wanna go below those black lines and close below those black lines because then you're back underneath the reaccumulation structure you built for the last year and a half, you know, to break out of it, right? So again, right, you can see all of these support areas and that's exactly where we are now. So this is a very pivotal point. This is exactly where we want to see a bottom come in. We want, right, because we have all of this resistance in here right we broke that resistance now we want to come all the way back down and we want to back test that resistance and hold it as support so this is all part of the bottoming process you could still have a little bit lower prices but it should still stay within the realm of you know uh, let's see uh, between a dollar forty and a dollar oh five really or i would say a dollar oh five to a dollar thirty um should be you know somewhere in that area and then we can start seeing some type of bottom formation and then we can start to get a directional bias right so if we depending what we form in here do we form a three wave shape like this do we form a five wave shape like this, right? Um, so it's gonna, you know, it's gonna determine, you know, if, if, if this is gonna be just a correction, right? Because it all comes down to this right here, right? So if this, this could all be an A wave, one, two, three, four, five, and then we get a three way pullback, and then we get one, two, three, four, and then five, or actually, yeah, five, and then we get three, and then we get one, two, three, four, five. So we get some kind of A, B, C, A, B, C, right? Some kind of larger correction. So we have three up, three down, and then we would get a big, either three up or five. So usually it'd be five, something like this, right? So it, this thing can turn into something much more, you know, complex in here. Right, um, this is our accumulation base, and you know the idea is to get this to be a one two one two, and then for us to continue higher in that third and fifth wave. But if this correction here is the beginning of a more complex correction, then what we would see at that point is a retracement back up, and then another dump back down. Right, so we're, we gotta really pay attention how this moves back up. Does it move up correctively or impulsively? We're gonna find out, right? Because, you know, we have a, you know, if this is five and then we get three, then we're probably gonna get another five down and this is gonna turn into a larger three wave shape. But the good thing is, if that happens, we're one third of the way there for the bottom. But then once we bottom out, it's going to be very impulsive. Um, so that's actually the most bearish thing that can happen for theta, 
right? The most bearish thing that can happen for theta is for us to come back up and then come back down in a three-wave shape. And then, you know, that, that would be very bearish. But for the time being, but it would actually be extremely bullish later on. Um, so we want to bottom out and we want to, you know, start accelerating back to the upside. Um, so it's all going to depend on Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin needs that five wave move um, back to the upside here. So when we look at Bitcoin, you know, it also is coming up. No, it's actually on a three day nine now. So it, ha it has a perfected. So data is on a four day nine. XRP is on a four day nine and Bitcoin is on a three day nine nine so that is you know the, the the more we go down the more exhausted it's gonna be the more likely we are for a retracement right so is it possible that this was not the fourth wave it could be because one of the things i was looking at is the degree of this wave and the degree of this wave it, it might be not a third wave for example this could be one two all of this is three right so you have one two three four five in wave three then you get wave four then you get wave five so then the whole thing becomes a bigger five wave move that is still on the table guys right because right now we have it as uh let me zoom in here right now we have it as a five wave move and rightfully so because it looks like a five wave move and it looks like in the, it's in the same degree one two three four five right and then in the fifth we have one two three four maybe we get five so but if this is one two and then this is one two three four five for wave three then we get some kind of wave four then wave five that's also possible, but, uh, you know, we're just going to have to wait and see how that plays out. Um, you know, I'm not convinced on that yet unless we break the low more violently. But uh, if we do that, you know, I'm looking at a back test of that 50K area. I mean, we got all the way down to about 53K, right? So maybe that could be enough here, 48K, between 48 and 53 uh, somewhere in there, right? Definitely don't want to go below 44, uh, cause that would be way too big, right? Cause the whole thing, right? In order for this theta thing, uh, the count to work, this needs to be some kind of fourth wave. For example, we have wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, and we still want to get wave five. If we get wave five, then you can count on theta impulsing back up if we don't and we have to, you know if this comes back up right if this is three like this and then we get another three like this and then we start coming back down into five then what that's going to be is a more um it's going to be a complex correction meaning it's going to be three 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 so it's going to be a bigger three-way move and if that fails then we have to go all the way back down into reaccumulation between 30 and 50K, somewhere right there, right? And then basically go down in here, go sideways, and then break to the upside. So, but as far as right now, it's looking pretty decent here. I mean, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. So we have five, three, five. That's an ABC, right? And an ABC following a five wave move. So when people are super bearish, it, you, know, you know, it doesn't make really much sense why they would be until it proves otherwise, right? If this thing right comes up like this maybe makes another low and then it starts to come back up and it gets rejected and then it starts to come down again then yes that's gonna look you know a lot more bearish but until then 
we have to treat it like an ABC here. So uh, let me zoom in again to the micro here on the small, small time frame. Now on the small time frames, right, we can see a five wave move, right? We have wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four, wave five. So we have a, a five wave move. And now it kind of looks like it's in a channel here. Uh, I don't really like that too much. You know, I don't like when it bottlenecks like that because that signals a big drop. I mean, we could be dropping now. I mean, it looks like, you know, we just had a pretty sharp impulse to the downside here. So, uh, but uh, let's see, we have... Potentially, this could be uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? And then we get a three-way pullback, one, two, three, four, five. So we want some kind of three-wave shape in here, right? So, but we don't want it to be too big, right? We want it to be proportional. Um, so maybe something like this. And then if I put on the retracement, right from here to there we don't want to fall below 54898 we don't want to go below that 702 anymore i mean if we do then we have one more at the 786 we definitely don't want to go below that so we want to kind of we want to stay above this area here as our support right let's make a higher low 1 2 3 4 5 abc make a higher low here if we do come down and we break the low and we sweep the low then it's going to look like it's going to be some bullish divergence forming in here right because we still don't have any bullish divergence on the smaller time frame so if this comes down and takes the low and the rsi makes a higher low we're going to have bullish divergence formed there so we can still get one more low and that would kind of make sense as well because we have one, two, three, four, five, right? So if this is in the middle of a fourth wave, we still need wave five, which means we can get down here to around 51, 52K. So hopefully we can hold the low. We'll see um, how that plays out. But uh, anything else here? Theta fuel, exactly the same thing as what I was saying here. Um, you know, for Theta Fuel, it's really the same, right? You can see it still looks like an expanded flat. You come down in wave A, right? And then you have this sort of, this sort of three wave shape here in wave B. And the B wave itself is also a flat, which is kind of interesting here. Boom, boom, boom. So you have that three wave shape. So here's your A wave. Here's your B wave, very complex. Right, and then you have one, two, three, four, five. So that's pretty. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty bullish there. And then that five-way move, right? So this is an A, B, C, and that A, B, C is correcting this impulse, which could then turn into a one, two, one, two here, or a th or a third wave, right? So we have one, two, three expanded flat for wave four then we get wave five or one two one two you know we build the base a little bit here and then we start continuing to climb so as long as we were above the back test level everything is still bullish it's still on tact all from my concerned i'm just seeing it back testing so uh um but yeah well, let's let's get this bottom hashed out in here and uh, see how it unfolds from there. If I turn on the sequential, um, I know we had a four day chart on theta. Let's see what the five day chart is saying. Okay, so the five day, we're coming up on an eight very soon. Um, let's see what the weekly is since the weekly is gonna end soon. We're also on a seven on the weekly. So within the next, you know, two weeks, actually in one week, we're going to get a nine, right? Because we're going to get an, an, an eight in less than, you know, a couple hours, right? By the time you watch this video. 
and then a week from there it'll be a nine and then a week from there that nine will close so in two weeks we should have a perfected nine by close on theta fuel so we'll see how that plays out um, at least let's get a bounce somewhere right um, as far as that goes I think that's about it I mean you can see all those red candles on Matic things are looking pretty bearish out there but at the end of the day that's what has to happen in order for price to become exhausted and eventually flip back bullish. You can see the altcoin on total three. We have a three-way pullback. So if we have a three-way pullback and we're back testing this area here, let's build a base and continue higher. So we'll see how that plays out. Anyways, that'll do it. This is not financial advice. Hit that like button if you can. Hope you guys enjoy your Sunday. And I will see you this coming week. And uh, by the way, drop a comment and let me know what you guys think. Do you think we're going to have to hit the low again? Or do you think the bottom is in for now? Let me think. Um, I'm going to think, I'm going to think, um, you know, I, I would give it at least 24 to 48 hours to really have that decision. But you really don't have to know right this second on the microstructure. But all in all... I think we're getting very close. So anyways, guys, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.